This hour of the Costa Report is brought to you by Dole Food Company, the world's leading producer and distributor of fresh fruits and vegetables. Welcome to the Costa Report. I'm Rebecca Costa, and thank you for joining me for another two hours of Straight Talk Radio. I want to welcome members of our armed forces who are joining us over the Internet and also new listeners in Fort Worth, Tampa, Boston, and Chicago. Thank you for being with us today. In just a moment, rock musician and outspoken board member for the National Rifle Association, Mr. Ted Nugent, will be joining us to talk about where the government has the right to draw the line where the Second Amendment, the right to bear arms, is concerned. Uh, You know, we're going to have one of those rare opportunities to find out if the person the media has portrayed as the Motor City Madman is really mad at all or whether his views have some basis to them. So fasten your seatbelts. We're in for a no-holds-barred conversation with Ted Nugent this hour. But before Mr. Nugent joins us, as is my custom each week, let me tell you a little about his background. Theodore Anthony Nugent was born in the community of Redford, Michigan, just outside of Detroit. His father was an Army Staff Sergeant. While still in high school, Nugent opted for a music career. He played in the group called the Royal High Boys, then later the Lords, and after that founded the Amboy Dukes in 1964, a band that enjoyed several hit singles. In 1975, Nugent left the band to pursue a solo career, which went multi-platinum in the 70s. To date, he has sold over 30 million records and recorded over 34 albums. Now, that achievement alone would be enough for most artists, but Nugent was just getting started. He began hosting a popular radio program on Detroit's WWBR, which in turn led to his own television shows, which included Wanted Ted or Alive, Ted Nugent's Spirit of the Wild, Surviving Ted Nugent, and other reality outdoor and survival programs. Mr. Nugent's vocal positions on the Second Amendment led to an invitation to join the National Rifle Association, and there is no question he has become a powerful campaign asset for conservative candidates, helping to pack auditoriums with supporters the same way that he has for more than 6,000 concerts. It's my pleasure to welcome to the Costa Report a popular survivalist who is as skilled on a guitar as he is with a bow and arrow, Mr. Ted Nugent. Thank you for joining us today, Mr. Nugent. Well, thank you, Rebecca. Greetings from uh, the Freedom Drench Barbecue Epicenter of Texas. <laughs> well, thank you for making time to talk to us today. We're In just a moment, we're going to be talking about gun control. But before we do that, uh, we have a pretty even mix of liberal, conservative, and independent listeners tuning in today. And, and the media seems to have done a good job of marginalizing uh, many of your views. So what I'd like to do from the get-go is correct some of the misperceptions the public may have about you. So so what's the most important thing you'd like the public to understand about your views? Well, we got to be real careful about uh, misrepresentation uh, because it's running amok out there. I think we can all agree on the Internet. People can just go ahead and lie and make things up, and they're notorious for doing that on an hourly basis. So I think when you go to my Facebook page and you see the tens of millions of people who understand what I'm made of, who know me, who have been to my concerts, who have listened to my thousands and thousands of interviews, that if I'm anything, it's not ambiguous. And I think the lies from the left that have been the most uh, uh, just soulless and just mean-spirited and hateful are when they claim that I'm a draft dodger because I'm not a draft dodger, never did anything to dodge the draft. They make terrible, nasty, vicious allegations against me. But the Nugent family and my band and my crew, our Spirit of the Wild production team, the dozens and dozens of charities that our our family is involved with, they know who Ted Nugent is. They know what I stand for. I've written three New York Times bestseller books. I'm writing for WND.com, Newsmax.com, Daily Caller, The Blaze, Deer and Deer Hunting. I write for over a dozen publications. So it's not like you can't get the truth right from the horse's mouth if you seek the truth. So I don't think there's any real misunderstanding. I think there's those that study the evidence, that listen to what I do and listen to what I say, and they know the truth. And then there's the haters out there that abandon the truth and resist the truth. And that's the that's the uh, horror of the culture war, that there are people who care and people that don't care. The people that care know me well. Well, I think you make a good point. Uh, the media certainly made it uh, the bur- put the burden of seeking the truth 
on the consumer uh, and the audience themselves. And and uh, it certainly may be out there, but uh, your work, your your uh, contributions to charities, um, your generosity toward mentoring young people, um, it, it always seems to get outshadowed by, uh, as you say, the name calling and some of the nasty business. Um, and no, uh, yeah, and I, I think that's really unfortunate. Uh, I, I don't like to see people get marginalized. And uh, so, you know, I, I appreciate this opportunity to try to the best of our ability in the next hour to try to set that record straight. Um, the, the, how you frame this is, is really uh, leads us into um, a lot of mis misperceptions about the Second Amendment of the United States Constitution, and I know you feel passionately about this. Now, I don't think anyone's arguing that private citizens should have the right to build their own nuclear missile in their backyard. So along those lines, would you agree that the government has uh, some right, some uh, public safety duty uh, to prohibit some weapons uh, and, and where where would you say they they've got to draw the line? Well, remember uh, we got to be real careful too, Rebecca. And, and by the way, thank you very much for allowing me to use your airwaves to get the truth out there. Because uh, even though I do have numerous opinions, my guy, my quality of life and my my chosen words are not based on opinions, but based on evidence, history. Uh, common sense, logic, self-evident truth, and the uh, information that is uh, universally available out there for those that seek it, like myself and yourself. So thank you for that. But I think we need to make sure that we don't separate the citizen from the government because the experiment in self-government is indeed we the people electing our employees to represent we the people. And the founding fathers made it quite clear that we came to this new land, this new dangerous journey ahead of us, so that the king didn't own the deer, that we the people own the deer, that the king doesn't get to have arms, we the people get to have arms. So I got to tell you, I, uh, I don't have to give you a, a, a hunch or a guess or a viewpoint. I'll bring you the, the, the statements and the absolute beliefs, the key word being absolute of the greatest people in the world, and those are the people I hang out with and barbecue with and hunt with and train with and, and perform law enforcement duties with, and those are the heroes of the U.S. military who know what their vow, their oath to the U.S. Constitution means and what the Constitution words mean. Yes. And I believe that we, the people, have the right to keep and bear arms that we can carry on our person to defend ourselves, and more importantly today than ever, to pr protect our, ourselves and our family from the engineered recidivism of violent criminals that our so-called justice system forces into our neighborhoods every day of the year. So I don't think the jury is still out. I think we know that we get to keep handheld firearms on our person to defend ourselves. I think that's what the Founding Fathers meant. And even if they didn't, I understand that because my gift of life from God is not only my right to defend, it's my duty to defend. So let's let's move past handheld firearms. I think, uh, as I understand it, out of 300 million firearms owned by Americans, about 100 million, about one third are handguns. So let's move to the other 200 million. I don't. I have no idea what they are. I'm not an arms expert. Um, is there some place that the government it's acceptable for them to draw the line where citizens shouldn't have arms? You know, i got to tell you uh, that the term militia mm -hmm. in, the, in the Second Amendment is quite clear that all able-bodied uh, male citizens, though I think in modern-day understanding that would be all citizens, male and female, um, should be a part of this militia. And I think the uh, media has done a fine job of misrepresenting what the word militia is. I hear oftentimes in the news today where it is the militia in Iraq that are stopping ISIS. It is the citizenry militia that is stopping al-Qaeda and the Taliban. Mm -hmm. and they're, they're lauded over there, where over here, if you use the word militia, somehow you're some kind of right-wing crazy man who wants to shoot up the neighborhood <laughs> when just the opposite is true. I agree with you. And Unfortunately, I'm going to have to cut you off there. we got to go to a hard break. But when we come back, let's, let's continue with that uh, along those lines. Uh, what does a militia mean, and why has that been painted so negatively in the United United States. We're going to take our first scheduled break. Stay right where you are. We'll be right back with Mr. Ted Nugent. You're listening to the Costa Report. Do you love creating salads as much as you enjoy eating them? Hi, I'm Amy Tobin, cookbook author and culinary expert. 
Dole inspires fresh and wholesome dishes for any meal with their wide selection of salad blends and all-natural salad kits. From the mild and tender texture of sweet butter lettuce to the crunch of classic romaine sprinkled with colorful shredded carrots and red cabbage, Dole has over 30 salad blends to satisfy every palate. If you're looking for the ultimate in convenience, try Dole's unique salad kit combinations that include farm-fresh lettuces and vegetables, mouth-watering all-natural toppings, and specially made dressings. It's all you need to make a distinctively delicious salad. The possibilities are endless. Visit www.dolesalads.com for recipes and other ideas to feed your culinary imagination. If you're wondering what to do with all that data you're creating, do I have an offer for you? Tableau is drag-and-drop software that people of any skill level can use to analyze and turn data into something actionable. That's right. I said actionable. And isn't that what all that data is for? With Tableau, you can connect to any data in virtually any format and visualize it on the fly. Databases, spreadsheets, even big data sources are instantly combined into usable charts, graphs, reports, and dashboards. People can analyze data and drag and drop at 10 times the speed of a traditional business intelligence system. But the most impressive thing about Tableau is that anyone can use it. And just to prove the point, you can get a free 14-day trial from Tableau just by mentioning you heard this ad. But do it now, because this offer won't last. For your free 14-day trial, visit Tableau at T-A-B-L-E-A-U dot com slash Costa. That's Tableau dot com slash Costa. Tableau Software. What's your data trying to tell you? History buffs. This tale from Michael Olson's Tales from a Tin Can took place while the USS Dale steamed through the South China Sea, January 1945. In the South China Sea, we had weeks of weather that was either bad, worse, or worst. Sometimes it was so bad, all you could do was tie yourself to a chair or in your rack and hold on. There was no way you could stand on deck. I remember looking out over the waves and seeing one of our sister tin cans do something that scared me out of my socks. That destroyer went completely airborne. Like a fish jumping out of the water, I clearly remember seeing both its propellers spinning in the air. The sonar dome, which extends down from the bottom of the ship, completely cleared the surface of the water. I thought, if this is going on, we don't stand a chance. Tales from a Tin Can contains 424 tales by 44 sailors aboard the USS Dale, from Pearl Harbor to Tokyo Bay. Order your copy at talesfromatincan.com. That's talesfromatincan.com. Tales from a tin can dot com. When you need legal help, call on the angel. It's a fact. We'll all need help to resolve a legal matter of one kind or another. When you find yourself in need of legal help, call on Angel Hess Attorney at Law. She's been helping people with legal documents for over 20 years. Now Angel has earned her master's in legal studies and Juris Doctorate and is licensed to practice law for you. I'm Angel Hess Attorney at Law. With my help, we can resolve your legal matters quickly and efficiently. I will listen to your needs and keep you informed of the pros and cons of each legal strategy. We will find the best course of action for you. And if I can't help you, then I will help you find someone who can. And today, Angel Hess has an angelic offer for each of you KSCO listeners, and only you KSCO listeners, a free half-hour consultation. That's right. Just pick up the phone and call her with your legal matter, mention KSCO, and get your free consultation today. When you find yourself in need of legal help, call on Angel L. Hess, attorney at law in Santa Cruz at 831-426-8536 or www.santacruzlegal.net. Welcome back to the Costa Report. I'm Rebecca Costa, and my guest today is legendary musician, survivalist, and advocate for the NRA, Mr. Ted Nugent. And before the break, you were saying that the term militia is greatly misunderstood when it comes to using this word to describe U.S. citizens who arm themselves. Yet the term seems to mean something almost admirable when we refer to citizen militias in the Middle East that are fighting terrorists. Well, I think it could be summed up quite clearly in historical evidence, and that is if it weren't for the American militia, we would be speaking, you know, with an accent from Britain today. I mean, I mean, it was the militia. It was we the people. It was a citizen watch group. Let's put it in that term. A citizen watch group who watches over their neighborhood. The militia is there when a tornado or a flood or a hurricane strikes. The militia was there at Concord Bridge when the British couldn't tax us into oblivion like they had back in the homeland. 
They were coming to take our guns. And we knew that we came to this experiment in self-government at great cost and risk and sacrifice so that the king wouldn't exclusively own the arms and he couldn't come to our villages and do as he wishes with us because we, the people, were taking control. It's, it's so cut and dry to those of us who study even a, a little bit of history, Rebecca, that I'm really uh, angered that this culture war has allowed these these historically glowing terms of independence and rugged individualism and caring about your neighborhood, caring about your society, caring about your family and friends has been turned uh, upside down by a by a left wing media who tends to condemn someone who's prepared to survive. I mean, think about it. I mean, do you have a fire extinguisher in your house or you're going to go get one after the fire starts? That's really the mentality of the militia, community watch groups, and those of us who believe in independence and taking care of ourselves, our family, and our neighbors. In in many ways, this is an argument about preemption, isn't it? Uh, It's whether you're going to take preventative measures uh, to ensure safety or whether you wait until danger is right at your front doorstep. Well, you know, the left has sent their minions, you know, Michael Bowling for Hygiene Moore and uh, Pierce looking for Logic Truth. They've sent them to debate me. And I think if you Google Uncle Ted debating these people, you'll see that it's not fair because they come in with nothing but presumptions and assumptions and guesswork and fantasy and denial. And I merely stand the ground of logic, and that is that the Nugent family has adequate fire extinguishers in our vehicles in our home. We have, we have firearms in our vehicles in our home. We have a spare tire and a jack. We have first aid kits. We've never needed any of those things, Rebecca. Yes. But we have them. Yes, uh, I understand. The last Boy Scout comes to mind. I understand. Now, we, we've established that uh, out of 300 million firearms, 100 million of them are probably handguns. And well, They haven't counted mine yet, obviously. <laughs> Well, then we'll just stop it by another hundred million. How's that? <laughs> so so uh, uh, let's talk about the other 200 million. Every, every time there is a tragedy, like a Newton, for example, um, uh, or Aurora, Colorado, um, there, there's an argument in favor of limiting semi-automatic and automatic weapons, as well as these large monster clips that make it easy to fire large rounds and reload quickly. Um, where do you stand on that? Well, first of all, if we study, which I have, I happen to know the cops who are on the scene in all these tragedies from Virginia Tech to Northwestern University outside of Chicago to Columbine to the, the, the heartbreak of Newton, Connecticut. And those actual professionals on the ground have explained clearly every time, and the media has failed intentionally to report what I'm about to tell you. In those conditions where they were gun-free zones in every instance, Anyone with zero training could have done the same damage with a single-shot firearm because their victims were trained to hide under tables, to lock schoolroom doors, to cower in hallways. It had nothing to do with firepower. It had nothing to do with magazine capacity. That is a scam like cop killer bullets, which there aren't any. It's a scam like Saturday Night Specials, which includes, by the language of Charlie Schumer and, and Maxine Waters and Barbara Boxer, a Saturday Night Special is 99% of all handguns. And, of course, if you banned easily concealable handguns and you just allowed skeet and trap shotguns, I'm sure someone could find a coping saw and turn them into easily concealable shotguns. The, the whole premise is based on a recidivism that our, ju- our so-called justice system guarantees. And in every instance of these mass slaughters of in gun-free zones of unarmed and helpless people surrounded by unarmed and helpless people, those perpetrators were known to be dangerous, they were known to be violent, and in nine out of ten of those cases, they were known to be crazy by their parents, their teachers, their family, their neighbors, and everyone, and our society did nothing Mm -hmm. until they attacked. And the reason they were able to get away with their slaughter is because there were no Ted Nugents in the area. And I don't want to get facetious, and I don't want to, you know, put a, a spotlight on me, but I'm just a guitar player, Rebecca, and if I'm there... 
It's not a gun-free zone since 1970. I have a duty to defend myself. And as a free American, we the people, experimenter in self-government, there is not a man alive that can force me into unarmed helplessness, especially with all the evidence and data that you just brought up on your program. Right. Well, I don't, let me say this. I don't think there's a single American uh, listening today who would call you just a guitar player. So we could move on from that. Um, uh, But but I I, want to say one thing. Certainly the NRA does not want people who are mentally ill or or, or have any instability or a history of violent crime to be armed. Am I right to say that? Well, not only are you right, but if you study the origins of those laws that were more more forceful and aggressive in identifying dangerous people and, and early release and paroled and plea bargained violent criminals out of the street, every one of those laws came from either NRA itself or NRA members or law enforcement who are involved with the National Rifle Association. The National Instant Check that's a, that's a National Rifle Association program. We're the one who initiated that. The Eddie Eagle uh, gun safety program all across America in the schools, that didn't come from Michael Bloomberg. That came from the National Rifle Association nearly 30 years ago, the most widespread and effective and successful gun safety program known to man. So we got to make sure that we always shine the proper, honest, accurate spotlight on the NRA. And those are law enforcement professionals. Those are um, uh, families who care about safety and security. I'm going to tell you another fact that shocks the media when I bring it up to them. This isn't a Ted Nugent fact. This is a Department of Justice and the U.N. Crime Report fact and the FBI Uniform Crime Report fact. Ninety to 96 percent. That's a huge number of violent crime is committed by violent criminals let out of their cages. Now, follow the guitar player. If you wanted to stop 90 to 98% of violent crime, don't let them out. <laughs> well, I think, I, I think that's where you probably lost all of us. It's much too logical. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't mean to make, I'm sorry, I don't mean to make light of this. Uh, it, it's just a fact that, uh, you know, if you let violent criminals back into society, you have more violence. Uh, it seems to make a lot of sense. We have to take another commercial break, but stay right where you are. When we come back, we're going to talk about the waiting period for arms registration. You're listening to the Costa Report. Have you checked out the Costa Report blog yet? Well, what are you waiting for? There's no quicker way to find out what newsmakers are saying than the Costa Report blog at RebeccaCosta.com. It's where the former CEO of Apple and PepsiCo, John Scully, predicts where the next tech breakthroughs are going to come from. And also where Trent Lott explains why a GOP reversal of the Senate nuclear option will signal real change in our nation's capital. And the Costa Report blog is where you'll discover why Alan Dershowitz is worried that ISIS is adopting Hamas-like tactics. You'll find all this and more at the Costa Report blog. A new blog is posted every week, and they're short, pithy, and tell the unvarnished truth. Just go to RebeccaCosta.com to get the latest blog. That's RebeccaCosta.com. And while you're there, be sure to register for updates and breaking news. The Costa Report blog bringing you the news the big networks don't and won't. Hi, registered pharmacist Ben Fuchs here. I've been studying healthy bodies for 35 years, and what I've got to tell you may shock and surprise you, but if you listen up, it may change your life. Vitamin D is good for a lot of things, from lowering blood pressure to supporting immunity to improving the health of the digestive system. It's become evident that this multifunctional nutrient is really important stuff. Vitamin D can best be thought of as an on switch for cells. The center of all cells contains a nucleus which houses the DNA, which can be thought of as a blueprint for the production of the various protein elements a cell needs to do its work. On the outside membrane of the nucleus is found an opening called a receptor into which vitamin D can snugly fit. This vitamin D receptor, the VDR, when bound to vitamin D, acts as an activator that turns on various areas on DNA called genes and stimulates the production of various proteins that are involved in cell health. Vitamin D binding to the VDR turns on the production of proteins and bone cells that can prevent osteoporosis. The vitamin D VDR receptor can stimulate the growth and development of immune cells, reducing the incidence of colds and flus, and it can activate the production of
of antimicrobial proteins or peptides from digestive cells that can help prevent food poisoning. One of the most underappreciated roles of vitamin D involves skin health. Like other cells, the nucleus in skin cells contains VDRs. When bound to vitamin D, chemistry is initiated, which results in the production of proteins that can keep skin cells dividing at an even pace. This can be important for treating skin diseases like psoriasis, and it's why vitamin D supplements and topical creams are the go-to pharmaceutical treatment for preventing psoriasis and improving the appearance of psoriatic plaques. Pharmacist Ben here urging you to go to kscohealth.com to order Beyond Tangy Tan the Healthy Start Pack, and other nutritional supplements that I personally use and recommend. You can purchase these premium quality products at wholesale prices online at kscohealth.com. That's kscohealth.com. I'm the pharmacist that believes that staying healthy and strong is not only about medicine, it's about giving your body the raw materials it needs to do its work. Go to kscohealth.com. Make sure you check out the cool videos, too, at kscohealth.com. That's kscohealth.com. Hey, all you Brightside Ben fans. If you have never had a chance to see pharmacist Ben Fuchs' health lecture about how the human body works at a cellular level, now is your chance. Brightside Ben will be in Santa Cruz on Saturday, June 27th for a midday health presentation. It will last approximately two hours with plenty of time for questions and answers at the end. If you or anyone you know is dealing with health issues that you are ready to find solutions for, this presentation is exactly what you've been waiting for. We want to help you get well, so this event is free to the general public. Seating is limited. We wanted to give you an early heads up. If you have never had a chance to see pharmacist Ben Fuchs' health lecture about how the human body works at a cellular level, now is your chance. The venue is to be announced in the weeks to come, and the event will be in the mid-afternoon. Call to reserve your seating at 831-216-6099. That's 831-216-6099. 831-216-6099. Welcome back to the Costa Report. I'm Rebecca Costa, and if you're just joining us, our guest today is Ted Nugent. And uh, to put our conversation uh, into perspective, you recently pointed out that uh, there are about 30,000 gun-related deaths a year in the United States, and about 17,000 of those are suicide-related, which I feel have to be treated completely separately. And I do wish gun statistics would separate that number out because it takes the number down to 13,000 gun assaults a year, which you go on to say are largely gang-related crimes. And you point out that these gangsters can be shown to come from homes where there are no fathers in the home or the family unit is is, uh, highly dysfunctional and and I, I'm going to quote you here. You say, no feel-good gun law is going to change that. Is that right? Well, I think, uh, again, that's not just the, the guitar player's hunch. That's uh, statistical from the FBI Uniform Crime Report and every study of violent crime uh, from around the world, where typically these uh, studies are initiated by an anti-gun agenda. And then the, when they find the statistics, they go, Oops, it it doesn't have anything to do with availability of guns. In fact, again, we have to look where the most violent zones are in America. And in every instance, Rebecca, it is a gun-free zone. I I believe it's currently 100% where there's a liberal Democrat in charge of the state or in charge of the city, and nobody is arresting uh, these violent, uh, recidivistic, uh, repeat offenders. And more importantly, when they are arrested on a gun crime with a so-called mandatory sentencing, they're still not put in jail. I mean, how many more newscasts do we have to be subjected to where they go, uh, so-and-so uh, the, who raped and murdered a family of eight uh, whose crime record goes back to his preteen years I mean, come on. If it, you know, if my dog bites me once, it's over. And I love my dogs. At some point, America has to go back where there's real accountability and quit worrying about why this person is violent. I don't care. Well, I do care why, why he's violent if there is some system that we can examine and remedy. But if he's been violent, he no longer gets access to victims. We have engineered victimization based on the liberal fantasy that someone must have an excuse for raping and murdering people. No more excuses. Keep them locked up. 
Well, along those lines, let me see if I can find some common ground where I think the NRA may be able to, um, I don't know, uh, reach out to people who are not in 100% agreement, but let's say might be 55% in agreement with what you just said. Um, Mental illness, as in the case of the co-pilot who crashed the German wings plane into the French Alps, it's a tricky thing to diagnose. Depression, uh, uh, people that don't show any previous um, record of violence. Um, It's not something we can diagnose very quickly, and we're not very good at it. So is there anything wrong with making the registration and permitting period a a little bit longer, let's say a year, to see if there's any reports of psychiatric issues during that period? I mean, if if you have a serious issue, or you intend to do people harm, it's pretty hard to keep that completely concealed uh, and put keep a lid on it for a full year. These these behaviors tend to kind of, you know, trickle to the surface. Is there anything wrong, as long as you're not prohibiting people from having an arm, you know, arms, is there anything wrong with just it, just making the, the uh, period longer that you have to wait? Well, you're, you're opening up a, an awful lot of... Uh, boxers here, and I think we can start with your first reference to the German pilot. They did know. They did know for a long period of time, but again, that's that liberal mindset that, well, he might have had a bad day, and yes, he has shown signs of danger, and he said things about crashing planes, and he's told his girlfriend it's on record with Lufthansa, but they didn't respond to it. So there's two issues here. Number one, that yes, we have to be more vigilant. We have to have real responsible and accountable professionals in those monitoring organizations to determine the solidity and the the, uh, psychological capabilities of individuals, especially who's going to fly a plane and own a gun. We all agree with that. NRA established the instant check system, and we established the background check system. But I think we can all agree, too, Rebecca, that we will never, ever end all tragedies. We cannot save people from themselves. We cannot be the universal omniscient watchdog. But but let's go back to what you said earlier. These people, they give early signs. They post their threats on Facebook, for gosh sakes. Uh, yeah, you know, they go to psychiatrists and they say, hey, the medication isn't working. I mean, we have the information, and now with electronic medical records, we ought to be able to somehow come up with some algorithm that says this person is in a bad place and probably shouldn't be near a firearm. I think we're all working in that direction. I mean, I can tell you from a, a personal heartbreak tragedy experience, my wonderful drummer Cliff Davies, who was the salt of the earth, one of the greatest virtuosos and gentlemen you'd ever want to know in life. He was stable and solid and responsible and professional and reliable and kind and loving, and he went through a bout of depression, and our pharmaceutical giants prescribed a certain uh, uh, prescription to him to deal with the 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 uh, the, the, the condition and his uh, his uh, his sadness and his uh, uh, his uh, his moment in time out of the ordinary. Mm-hmm. But then I think if we study suicides in this country, poor Cliff committed suicide when he went cold turkey off of this depressive medication. And I think we can cite thousands and thousands thousands of examples. So I would propose to you, if those masters of the pharmaceutical professions can't give the proper uh, direction and counseling to their patients, who do we turn to? Well, well, that's, that's a very good question. And your assertion is, at the end of the day, it's the family unit that is broken absolutely, and that no doctors and no guns and no laws are going to fix that so I guess and you've been you've come out very strong on this the fact that there's a a father figure uh, the fact that uh, families don't sit around and have dinner together and and people are not truly engaged uh, with each other uh, as they used to be as a family unit that you've been very vocal about this, but, you know, I hear what you say, but I'm not, I think like a lot of listeners, I'm not sure how to fix that. Well, have I adequately expressed my love for you lately? <laughs> <laughs> because, again, you seem to be this wonderful, but what, by the way, 
you would fit fine in my band and my crew and my family and my entire team of hundreds of people, my employees and my friends and my hunting buddies, because you, Rebecca Costa, are a logical person. Your brain is working adequately, and I know you didn't need confirmation from the Motor City Mad Men. No, I appreciate that, and I, and, I, and I thank you for your nice compliment. You know, these are problems I struggle with myself. I worry about them every day. I wake up and worry about them. I go to sleep and worry about them. Even if I can agree that the family unit is in trouble. I don't know how to fix that. Well, Rebecca, if I may, and I know we have time constraints on your show, and again, I thank you sincerely for the opportunity to express not what Ted Nugent thinks, but what the people I communicate with in an aggressive and a very positive and loving way. I am the Motor City Madman. I play scary music. I not only wrote Wango Tango, I believe in it. So my point is... <laughs> I am a father and a grandfather, and I am a wild man. I've been clean and sober for 65, 66 and a half years. Clean and sober, very important. That indicates discipline. That indicates intelligent prioritization. If you met my sons, my daughters, my grandchildren, my brothers, my sister, my incredible wife, Shemaine, my assistant, Linda, my manager, Doug, my band, my crew, my Spirit of the Wild production team, all the people I hang with, you would find a Rebecca Costa profile. We communicate. Not a day goes by, Rebecca, where I don't call my children from around the country. Not a day where mm -hmm. I don't text and email and tell them I love them and that I'm here for them and I'm proud of this, but I think you should watch that. Yes, well, well, what that's, what's that, that's called is paying attention, living a conscious life where you know what your priorities are and you know what keeps you intimately connected. Uh, to to what's important in your life. Now, we have to take our last break, but stay right where you are. We'll be back after these important messages from our sponsors. You're listening to the Costa Report. If you're wondering what to do with all that data you're creating, do I have an offer for you? Tableau is drag-and-drop software that people of any skill level can use to analyze and turn data into something actionable. That's right. I said actionable. And isn't that what all that data is for? With Tableau, you can connect to any data in virtually any format and visualize it on the fly. Databases, spreadsheets, even big data sources are instantly combined into usable charts, graphs, reports, and dashboards. People can analyze data and drag and drop at 10 times the speed of a traditional business intelligence system. But the most impressive thing about Tableau is that anyone can use it. And just to prove the point, you can get a free 14-day trial from Tableau just by mentioning you heard this ad. But do it now, because this offer won't last. For your free 14-day trial, visit Tableau at T-A-B-L-E-A-U dot com slash Costa. That's Tableau dot com slash Costa. Tableau Software. What's your data trying to tell you? I'm here today with Scott Caraccioli of Caraccioli Cellars, and I have a question for you, Scott. What goes into making Method Champenois Bubble? You know, it's a process that's really defined by the French government that we've taken and enacted into our wines, which really drive the quality of our sparkling project. So this is a process that the French government defines pretty specifically, and you remain faithful to that. Yeah, 100%, and in some places we push it a little bit. Now, how do the bubbles translate on the palate? You know, it really gives you that vehicle, that mousse for the character of the sparkling wine, carrying the fruit and the complexity. It's the expression of the wine. To find out more about Caraccioli Wines, visit us at www.caracciolicellars.com or stop by our tasting room in downtown Carmel, California. That's Caraccioli Cellars, C-A-R-A-C-C-I-O-L-I, -C -C Cellars, come taste the difference. Hey, 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 listen up, listen up. Do you know of a family coping with a parent's cancer? Camp Kesem UC Santa Cruz provides a free summer camp for kids who have or have had a parent with cancer. Camp Kesem UCSC is still looking for campers ages 6 to 18 to join their camp adventure in the Yosemite area from June 15th to the 20th. If you know any children who may benefit from Camp Kesem, please direct them to our website, campkesem.org slash Santa Cruz. That's K-E-S-E-M, Camp Kesem. 
People do not like going to the dentist unless they're going to this dentist. Hello, folks. Michael Olson here with Dr. Guy Peabody. Well, doctor, you work with a lot of people who haven't been to the dentist for a long, long time. There's got to be a little fear there when they show up in your office. Yeah, it's funny you ask that. People are worried when they first come to see us that they haven't been to the dentist in a long time because they're afraid they're going to get berated. And uh, I chuckle at that because we're here to help people. We assure them that we have today and the future. We're just going to take good care of them and everything's going to be fine. The The most important thing we can do for them is listen to them. We want to find out what their concerns are. We want to find out who they are as people. We want to know if they're apprehensive about dental care or not. We want to know what their goals are. My job is to mainly find out how I can make them happy, and I can't do that unless I know what's going on inside. Call Dr. Guy Peabody for our consultation today and wake up to a beautiful smile tomorrow. 831-457-0343 or visit drpeabody.com. This is Stephen Wagner, co-host of Wagner & Winnick on the Law. Have you ever thought to yourself, there ought to be a law? Well, often there is. Please join Monterey College of Law President and Dean Mitchell Winnick and me each Saturday for two lively hours of discussion. That's right. We have expanded the format, and we want you to join us each Saturday from 3 to 5 p.m. right here on AM 1080 KSCO. Welcome back to the Costa Report. I'm Rebecca Costa, and our guest today is legendary musician, author, survivalist, and conservative voice, Mr. Ted Nugent. If you don't mind, Mr. Nugent, I'd I'd like to switch gears for just a moment uh, to the new GOP-controlled Congress. Um, in, In your view, what is job number one for the Congress to get put through yesterday? My goodness, uh, it's a target-rich environment for upgrade, is it not? <laughs> yes. Um, well, you know, I have to tell you, I'm an independent. I'm not a conservative. I'm not a liberal because I don't really care where a good idea comes from. As, as long as it's good for the country, I, I cross aisles back and forth. And, and, and it drives people nuts. They, they go, I, I'm trying to pin you. How can you have Ted Nugent on and then the next week have Ralph Nader on? I go, because I'm, I'm shopping for a solution anywhere. Well, and I'm with you on that. I think you're talking about uh, uh, practicality, um, uh, uh, pragmatism. Yeah, that, that's what I am. I'm a, pragma- I'm a pragmatist, that's for I'm sure. I'm a hopeless pragmatist. If I thought Michael Moore could help save a child's life, I'd hire him. <laughs> um, boy, if that's not inclusive, I don't know what is. <laughs> that, that you're absolutely right. Maybe, maybe, you, maybe you are more independent than you are conservative, but I, I won't tell anybody that. Well, I think I, think I am. I think I, I, I just know that I wouldn't agree with Charlie Schumer on anything except he at least ad- admits that uh, the president's uh, attempt at a, at a deal with Iran is uh, borderline insane. Well, he, he has he has called for an up and down vote in the Congress yep. on yep. this so there's, on, there's, the, on this Iran yeah. agreement. So you might agree with him on that. Yep, I do. And that's mm-hmm. my point is that I'm also a pragmatist. I need to get the job done. Um, I'd like to think that I would be Schindler and I would have a long list uh, my point being is that I know these Republicans, and I, I spoke at the uh, Maricopa County Republican uh, dinner, uh, Lincoln Day dinner last week in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, and I would say that uh, my speech, my presentation, uh, I, I like to refer to it as a campfire sharing, uh, was 35% hysterical laughter because I am a funny man. Uh, 25% um, thank you for the good that they do, and the rest of it was absolute scolding and condemnation for not standing up for what they believe in and compromising, compromising, compromising. And I don't believe that politics is the art of compromise. I believe that politics in an experiment in self-government is is genuine and absolute adherence to the U.S. Constitution and what is best for society. So let me sum it up in a simple way. Even though foreign policy is critical and tax reform is critical and there's so much reform, education reform is critical, court reform is, is pivotal. But what's at the top of the list? What's at the top, the top of the list for this GOP Congress to take care of business? Here's the top of the list. This is the battle cry that the Nugent family and everybody in America who is in the asset column, who are producers, who do the best that they can be, who are driven to be a benefit to their family, their neighborhood in this great country, and mankind and the environment, is, is, is found in the following battle cry. If you want it, 
earn it. If you want a phone, earn it. If you want food, earn it. And if every able-bodied American would earn their own way, then we would have unlimited funds to help the truly needy and to fix the truly needy. And right now, those taking from the producers, I would venture to say that in the somewhere in the 90 percentile, they don't need squat. They just like taking. So that's the battle cry. If every American did the best that they could do and they absolutely earned everything they want, we would once again be the leader of planet Earth in productivity, goodwill, generosity, and charitableness. That's the battle cry for the GOP. Now, why why am I picturing a, a uh, army of people with T-shirts that say earn it and bumper stickers that just say earn it? It, it, it's, it's two words, and it, I think it, it spells out your position that uh, when we're a country that wants to work for what we get, uh, we're a strong country. Bingo. Yeah. I mean, hello. <laughs> I yeah, mean, but I'm not surprised. I, I'm not surprised. You, your father was from the military, and, you know, uh, uh, one thing I laugh about, it, my kids laugh about it, actually, is that my dad was in the CIA, and so he, I was raised in a military-type family as well. And it's funny, when we go on a family vacation, we have an area called the staging area. <laughs> and I tell my kids, everything in the staging area will go in the car, if it's not in the staging area, you will learn to live without it over the vacation. We would get along. Fine, Rebecca. All my children wouldn't have to guess what you're talking about. They go, yeah. So what else is new? Uh, yeah. The other kids in the neighborhood are, you know, they go, what? Your your mom? What is she doing? And I said, that's that's the way we do things here. We're organized. We clearly communicate, and we get a lot done. Organized, clearly communicate, <laughs> disciplined, conscientious, attentive. Caring, giving, supportive, producing, and getting things done. Wow, I'm going to write that down. <laughs> it seems pretty basic, but, you know, we come from a different time as well. Uh, I got one more question for you. Uh, who do you want to see throw their hat into the ring for the next presidential election? Well, I, I really admire what uh, uh, Scott Walker has done up in Wisconsin. I really admire the great Governor Rick Perry, and he has not been uh, accurately represented because he was in the last debates. He was on painkillers following a, dr- a dramatic uh, back surgery. Yes, I know uh-huh. the great Rick Perry. He would make the best president. He would adhere to the Constitution, and he knows he works for we the people. I think Ted Cruz is great. I think Rand Paul is great. I, a lot of them have many, many attributes, but I haven't seen a 100 percenter yet. I'm waiting to really see what Scott Walker says and Marco Rubio. These are some great men. And i got to tell you, uh, I really believe what Dick Cheney articulated recently. I really believe that Barack Obama is not fumbling. He's not just a community organizer and inept and making mistakes. I believe that his plan is coming true. Mm-hmm. I believe that Barack Obama doesn't think that America is special. I believe that Barack Obama doesn't like that America outproduces the rest of the world, that somehow working harder is cheating. So I think that the dismantling, the fundamental transformation, if you will, of America under the hands of a liberal Democrat machine under Barack Obama has been a tragedy and will go down in history as the dismantling well, it's always hard to say how it's always hard to say how history is going to judge a president. As you know, the more time that goes by, we look at President Nixon and Kennedy very, very differently uh, today uh, than we did when they were uh, when they were in office. Um, uh, I do want to uh, make sure that we have time for you to give your website where listeners today can get more information, and particularly about your mentoring programs that you have for young people. We didn't have a chance to speak about that today, but I want to be sure that you give your website so that our listeners can go there and they can contribute to those programs because they're very important. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, it's tednugent.com, and if you come to my Facebook, we have literally tens of millions of people. And, boy, talking about goodwill and decency and positive energy and humor, um, at Ted Nugent Facebook and at my, my tednugent.com website, we talk about the different charities we're involved with, which happens to be hundreds, I believe. But we have our own Freedoms Angels military charities where we help the wounded heroes of the military and their families. We have the Ted Nugent Camp for Kids for 25 years now, mentoring children and being the best that they can be to be clean and sober and be a benefit to the environment, hands 
hands-on conservation, hunting, fishing, trapping, awareness of uh, where quality air, soil, and water comes from. But we're so uh, honored and humbled by the people that stand with us, Rebecca. They're talking about generous, loving, giving people. In every charity event we're involved with, the NRA members and my hunting buddies come through with just tsunamis of generosity of cash and goods to help the children, to help the military. And I think that's the most important cause in America today because freedom is not free. And the heroes of the military and their families have sacrificed dearly for this experiment in self-government. So I will not be silenced. Absolutely. You're right. Freedom is not free. And uh, we have to take care of those who put their lives on the line for that freedom. That is all the time that we have today. But before we say goodbye, I'd like to thank you for your music, your advocacy, advocacy and also for making time to be with us today. I appreciate it very much. Thank you, Mr. Nugent. Thank you, Rebecca. Godspeed. If your station is leaving us after the first hour and you have a question or a comment to make about our interview with Ted Nugent, you can email me at RebeccaCosta.com or drop me a note on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. And if you missed the full interview with Mr. Nugent or any of our other guests, you can download previous episodes of the Costa Report from our website, Apple iTunes, Podbean, and our YouTube channel. If your station is leaving us after this first hour, we have a special guest next week who was unable to confirm with us prior to airtime today. So please check your local station for next week's guest or visit our website for the guest biography and the topics that they'll be speaking about. Rest assured, when they keep the guest under wraps from the host, it means the guest is an important one. So I hope you'll join us again next week on the only news program that puts policy ahead of politics. Now stay tuned for another hour of Straight Talk Radio. You're listening to the Costa Report. For 50 years, the American Program Bureau has represented some of the most famous, in-demand female speakers from around the world. From award-winning actresses to activists, journalists, best-selling authors, and innovative business and community leaders, these speakers have inspired and empowered millions on the screen, in print, and in front of live audiences. APB's roster includes the first female president of Ireland and former UN Commissioner for Human Rights, Mary Robinson, the first female president of Liberia and Nobel Prize laureate, Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, and Pulitzer-winning journalist, Cheryl Wudun. To schedule a